How can something that's so small and so affordable make such a big difference and make your TX-22 feel like a whole new pistol? TX-22 owners, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to another Tandem Cross video. I'm Luke and today we're gonna to be talking about a brand new, small, yet incredibly effective product for the TX-22 family. This little spring here is the new TX-22 Trigger Spring by Tandem Cross. This spring is gonna reduce your trigger pull weight by about two pounds and it's also gonna remove a lot of the, the gritty feeling with the trigger pull while also maintaining a positive trigger reset. And that's right, you guessed it, it pairs perfectly with our Victory Flat Face Trigger for the TX-22. It's a drop-in install with no permanent modifications and at the end of the video, Tyler is gonna show you how to get yourself up and running with what feels like an entirely new trigger um, with a before and after comparison of the trigger pull and such. Also, it's important to note that this trigger spring will work in all three TX-22 models, whether it be the standard competition or the compact. So as long as you have one of those, you're in business. For me personally, the reduced pull weight and just the much cleaner and less gritty um, trigger pull just makes the TX-22 feel like an entirely new pistol. And I've loved this pistol already for a long time, so this is just the cherry on top. And now we're gonna kick it over to Tyler where he's gonna show you how to install the trigger spring and he's also gonna do the demonstration of the before and after on pull weight with the gauge. Here we go. All right, so before we go ahead and put the new lightened trigger return spring in, Let's go ahead and get this trigger pull test going. Just to make sure we are flagged so we have an empty chamber and we have no magazine. So, ready the scale. Four pounds, nine ounces. Four pounds, 13 ounces. Four pounds, 11 and a half ounces. Okay, now that we have our baseline, we'll put the average up. Let's go ahead and install the new spring. So to do that, we're gonna take the slide off as the manual instructs. Set that aside. So now we can take the frame and as far as tools go, need a little hammer, 16th inch punch or metric equivalent, the spring itself, and then a little pick or small fine pliers. I really like using this little eyeglass screwdriver for this job. So we'll get this out onto a punch block and we'll be driving out the four frame roll pins located over here. So now that we got the four roll pins out, we'll just set those aside. And then from here, you can just push back on the trigger a little bit and then push up and you'll see the front frame block begin to lift. Pull that up gently and you'll see the rear block will come with it a little bit. Just keep your hand over the rear block here. Just be careful as well for the two bars that link the front and rear blocks together. Just give it a little pressure with your finger so that Everything comes out in a whole unit. Like that. So we can set the frame aside as well. There we go. And so the left side slide stop plate will come off as well as its little spring. We'll show how to get those back in in a moment. And we can set aside the rear block as well. The part that has the two safety levers and the ejector and the sear. Considering ourselves with the front frame insert, you'll see the original trigger return spring right there. To get that out of here, we can reach for our little pick tool, grab the forward loop of that spring that is wrapped around a little roll pin. Go ahead, just pluck that off. You'll see that the trigger bar is now sort of free pivoting on the trigger. We can go ahead and now just Pluck that off of the little bent tab right there. So to put the new spring in, we'll just reverse those steps. Loop of the new spring over that little leg. There we 
go. Now we can pivot the bar back up, take our pick, stab through the loop on the front, stretch that up and over that roll pin, and shimmy it down. Why I really like a little pick or a flathead is now you can sort of press the spring in, make sure it's all the way seated against that roll pin. And now the spring is installed and you'll see it's returning. To reassemble the front frame insert now, we can set everything else aside and take a look at the bolt stop plate and its return spring. To do that, just take your front frame block, flip it so that the other side's facing up. You will see a little cutout here, this little semicircular opening. Into that goes the coil spring for these, the bolt stop. And now take the plate, locate the hole at the front. That goes on this little dowel pin and then bring that bar up so that two things have happened here. One, the plate is over this little lip here and the spring is compressed right there as well. So now to hook these two bars back into this rear block, the trigger bar has a 90 degree bend in it. That will go into the hole right here on the side of the block then flipping it over you'll see that the slide stop plate has a sort of stair step shaped cut and there's a corresponding step cut on the other side of the rear block just under the front edge of the safety let's see if i can tilt it so you can see it well in the camera view oh there you have it just like that so that is the proper orientation for these two components, which will then be fit back into the frame. So you can start with dropping the front block in, sliding the rear block in as well. You will need to maneuver the slide stop bar a little bit just to make sure everything lines back up. And there you have it. The front and rear frame inserts have slid into the frame nice and easy. So now we just wanna do a final check to make sure everything is okay before we go ahead and sync the pins all the way through. We'll do that by just giving the pins a little bit of a start. So now that the pins are about halfway through, we can check to make sure that the safety is operating freely, that the bolt stop is operating freely. When you push up, it'll pop back down on its own. And then when we pull the trigger a little bit, it springs back as well so that we know the trigger bar, slide stop, safety, none of those parts are getting bound up from a incorrect reassembly. So now that we have verified that that is all A-OK, -okay, we can go ahead and tap these four pins back in until they are flush. So now that all the pins are back in and approximately flush on either side, slide goes back on. Excellent. Now to check, we have nice. Break and reset. Perfect. Now for the follow-up of our trigger pull test. Again, this is still using the factory trigger, so the only difference is the spring here. Three pounds, 0.5 ounces. Two pounds, 13 ounces. Two pounds, 13.7 ounces. And there you have it. You've now installed that lightened trigger return spring, and as you just saw, the effect of just the spring was pretty significant on lowering the overall trigger pull weight. Back to Luke.
As usual, thank you for watching our video. If you want any information on any of our products, the link to our webpage is down below. You can go check it out there. Uh, appreciate all the support we've gotten recently. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video on whatever social media platform you use. I'm Luke with Tandem Cross, and we're here to make your good guns great. Keep up with us on social media for daily updates. I'll see you next time.